welcome to The Brain Factor, hosted by myself, Joy Riddle, and Laura Hawley. We're a part of Meridian Behavioral Healthcare, where we believe that wellness is within everyone's reach. This podcast is a conversation about what research-based protective factors look like in real life. Our hope is that you'll walk away with something that you can use in your own life and have had some fun with us along the way. So let's get started. Hi, and welcome to The Brain Factor. Uh, I'm Laura, and this is Joy. And today, uh, it's November, so we're going to talk about the sort of looming, pending holiday season that has started for some, getting ready to start for others, but the next, I don't know, 30, 60 days are going to be full of joy. Joy (laughs) and expense expense and and chaos and and, all kinds of family and friends and meals and parties and presents and things that... um, uh, appear happy and mm-hmm. for the most part are positive and happy and celebrations, but it comes with a layer, right? So we're going to need good coping skills to yes. get through this. Yes. We're going to need problem solving skills. Uh, and, uh, that's a good thing because those happen to be protective factors. Yeah. So we're going to talk about those today, uh, through the lens of the hustle and bustle of what we are, um, going through currently. Right. Yeah. So, I don't know about anybody else, but sometimes I will find myself burning the candle, not at both ends, but in the middle, off to the side. It's like a bonfire just like, candles. Yeah, yeah, like <laughs> setting the whole thing on fire during, for me, for my cultural celebrations through December. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, just preparing for everything and making sure that every package is worked part perfectly and coordinated mm-hmm. and everything else. And that becomes uh quite a big struggle. Well, there's so many expectations through the holidays too, Mm -hmm. like our own expectations of ourselves and what we're providing for other people. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, when we're in any kind of position where we're sort of taking on the responsibility of someone else's happiness, whether it's like as a spouse or as a parent or, you know, or the party host or whatever, you know, we're now feeling like we have to make everybody else's holiday perfect, right? Yeah, Um, yeah. And And when you bring up a good point, when you talk about my husband, I may have mentioned this on one of our episodes last year, not really sure, but my husband and I come from very different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. Although we grew up in the same exact town, uh, in New York, uh, we're just so different. And when we first um, were living in the the same house together and I said I was going to have a holiday, I think at that time for us it was Easter. I'm just going to have, you know, the immediate family over. And he was like, what is going on here? We've been invaded <laughs> by like Italy, you know, just <laughs> loaded in. And he's like, this is not a few people. I'm like, well, yeah, it is. It's only like 26 for you that was the core family yeah it was just like my sister my brother my nieces my nephews my you know my parents or my dad at that time yeah Yeah. and so to you that's a small crowd right that was a small Um, crowd and everybody's yelling because the only way to be heard mm -hmm. at our house when we're all together is if you're loud because everybody's talking and you can hear every conversation everywhere and it doesn't matter if you're in the other room Mm -hmm. you're still in that conversation and I love that example because that's 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 a perfect example of how like for you that's comforting yeah. and that feels like home and that feels like a holiday celebration. And Set it may have been my very right stressful roof, for right. your husband. Mm-hmm. That didn't feel like a holiday. It didn't feel warm. It probably <laughs> felt aggressive right? <laughs> <laughs> and loud and, and maybe not, maybe something he had to learn to enjoy mm-hmm. and associate with family and holidays over the years that you've been together. Right. But right out of yeah. the gate, that's a, a great example of where his expectations were very, very different than yours. Mm-hmm. Right. And so somebody has, their expectations met, somebody else might feel disappointed or slighted. And there's a lot of that that happens over the holidays. And I think, I think that's probably, you know, one of the bringing us to kind of the first tool would be Mm -hmm. managing those expectations, right? Mm -hmm. You know, who are you sharing the holidays with? Having, even just having transparent conversations about what do the holidays look like for you? Mm -hmm. You know, what, what, what's the, what's the, um, non-negotiables here, right? Um, because I, you know, I, I know that like when my husband and I got together, it was, uh, Christmas Eve was a thing. Right. Because like my birthday do. is Christmas. And yeah. so oh, I've wow. always, yeah, Christmas Day. So I've always celebrated it Christmas Eve, but in his family, Christmas Eve was the Christmas. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, okay, well, what does this look like now yeah. for what my expectations are of like mm-hmm. my family and how I want to raise my kids and what I want my home to look like in the holidays and what is comfort and holiday and celebration for him? Yeah. You know? And uh, 
We're still figuring that out. It's been like 15 years or so. Oh, yeah. We're still going through the same thing every Christmas day. My husband's like, Christmas is a little disappointing now because we're the same thing. Giant Christmas Eve, everything happens, mm-hmm. families together, you do presents and everything. And Christmas Day is just a little bit more chill than that. And he's yeah. like, but it's supposed to be the exciting day. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, I tell you what was really interesting for us is mm-hmm. asking, you know, or I don't even know if we directly asked her if it just came up, but hearing our daughter talk about what Christmas looked like for her. Because, oh. you know, it was, you know, she's now grown up with this idea of what Christmas looks like for her, which wasn't what it looked like for him or what it looked like for me. Mm -hmm. And we feel like we've been flying by the seat of our pants for 15 years. But meanwhile, that's created this expectation that she now has and will have that's all positive and warm and happy and stuff. Right. So that helped us really manage our expectations uh, as the, as the providers of joy. Right. So in that situation, interesting. Yeah. Really kind of looking at, you know, you have sort of your expectation about what you want to provide for other people, but ask them, like, mm-hmm. what's your experience with the holiday? What's your experience with this? How are, how does it feel to you? You know? Yeah. And you might realize you actually are providing that. It just looks different. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Or they're like, you're crushing me. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Like, this isn't fun at all. This is not fun. Are you having fun? <laughs> I'm not having fun now. <laughs> well, and I think financial expectations mm-hmm. is another one to really look at and look right. at the impact that's going to have. Right. So if you overextend and in some of our previous episodes, we talk about budgeting and we talk about finances and it, it's a good time to revisit those. Right. Go back and look at some of those tools, rewatch those, um, because I think we we tend to want to just sort of like, well, we'll just get through this, the holidays, right? I'll just put it on a credit card. Like I'll finance it. I'll deal with it in January, (laughs) right? Well, what is January, February, and March? What impact does that have on your life? What does your life look like in those three months because of that sort of temporary, immediate um, instant gratification for the holidays and how important was that really? You know, yeah. and I remember when I was growing up, um, I, I won't say the year because I'm old. Um, but, uh, <laughs> my, my father, uh, is, uh, my, we have a family business been in the family for many, many, um, years, many decades and, um, still is. And, uh, he had, um, opened a second business, uh, in my young childhood and, uh, and it was not successful that second business mm. and, um, sort of, Bleeded into everything. And and that year, not too long before the holidays, they had come very close to losing everything. Right. And then they had two small children at home. Right. And so my mother pieced together and I would find out years later, you know, that was the year I got the Barbie dream house under the Christmas tree. Yeah. She got it at a yard sale, cleaned it up, put the Barbies out. Right. And so like nothing was in a box. I didn't know. It you just thought looked, that how cool I can just play jump in and play, right? Yeah. You know, and she like made these flowers for the flower boxes because those were broken when she got it. And like, you know, and she probably spent 20 bucks on the Barbie dream house because mm-hmm. it was in bad shape and she fixed it, you know? And uh, that was one of the best Christmases ever yeah. in my perspective. Mm-hmm. One of the hardest and the worst on her and on my father, right? So I think managing those expectations by really taking a look at how other people are experiencing the holiday that you're providing can really help. Mm -hmm. I I know that that has helped me like stepping outside of myself and just having that perspective. Um, I think with the holidays too, and this is something I really wanted to ask you about, because with the holidays comes, you mentioned burning the candle and like, you know, exploding the fireworks of candles. Uh, But, uh, you know, we're, we're, there's late nights and there's planning and there's early mornings and there's so much to cram in a short amount of time and um, things suffer, right? Including our sleep. And I've heard you use the term sleep hygiene. Right. And I don't, I don't fully know exactly what that is. Can you talk to us about what sleep hygiene is and we can unpack that? Yeah. Sleep hygiene is a little bit broader, uh, a little bit broader perspective on getting ready for bed as opposed to, you know, take a bath and go to bed. You know, you know, you need to do things to help you go to sleep, but sleep hygiene takes into account your behavioral and environmental factors and it starts way before. So say if you're someone that works out, um, are you able to go to the gym at eight o'clock and then come home and take a bath and go to sleep? Or do you need to go to the gym at eight in the morning? You know, think about Mm -hmm. when you disconnect from your TV or your devices. You know, there's a lot of science on how long that uh, stimulates your brain after you stop uh, watching it. So um, do you need to get a cup of tea, take a bath? Will taking a walk after dinner, you know, will that help you 
later on with your sleep. When can you start making the lights a little bit lower in your house if that's going to be something that's going to help you get a little bit more sleep? So it's just a little broader look about about even sleeping. Like, yeah. I, I, like I learned about myself mm-hmm. several years ago, which was very disappointing that, uh, you know, past a certain time of day, which is a very early time, like two, three o'clock, if yeah. I have a cup of coffee, right. Um, you know, and it's not decaf, I have trouble hours later when I'm trying to go to sleep. Is that kind of something like that? Would yeah. Be part so you of have to, hygiene? yeah, absolutely take that into account and even different things. <laughs> it's like, do you share your room with someone? Mm-hmm. Do they snore? How does that <sighs> impact your sleep? You know, how do you manage that? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I, I live with a snorer. Yeah, me too. Yeah. But he would say I snore too, but I think he's lying. No, he's lying. He's yeah, lying. No, that's it's just deflective. not true. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it is deflective. That's, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember you had said, and and we did as well, that you bought an adjustable I bed, did. right? Yes. And I, and I, I got one of those too, but I, I joke uh, that my husband's snoring adjusted to the adjustable bed. So yeah. for us, that hasn't been super effective, but yeah, well, it works pretty good for us, but my husband doesn't know this, but while he's asleep, he's on like a carnival ride. Cause if he goes, <laughs> You're over there hitting I mean, the button, hitting the button, <laughs> raising them, lowering, raising them, lowering them. I just I have no joy. That feels <laughs> passive aggressive. <laughs> you know, I got it. Girls got to sleep. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, you know, and and uh, it's interesting because we're joking about it, but as we're talking, I'm I'm realizing that we actually like the snoring is a thing, right? That's yeah. a real thing, and we have had conversations about it. Like, if I have to get, I'm not a morning person, you know that, right? So if I have to get up, like you know, very early, if I'm like a 5 a.m. and I got to be somewhere at six or whatever, um, you know, we'll talk about like, do you, you know, like, why don't you go to sleep first? And then this way my snoring won't wake you up or like on some rare occasions, maybe I'll sleep in the guest room. Right. Yeah. And, and that sounds to me like what, based on what you're saying, that that's part of sleep hygiene too. Like absolutely planning for sleep and how the whole day and you just hit the nail it. on the head. That's a big thing. Plan it. Think about all these things yeah. in advance. I mean, and here's the other thing. Don't try to do everything at once because that's how we set ourselves up for failure. Right, right. But it's over time, checklist. just yeah. right, exactly. <laughs> and even if it's a written plan, you know, where you're going to have bullet points where it says, okay, well, at this time, I'm going to turn the TV off and right, right. start reading a book, that type of thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. just plan it out. Yeah. No, and that's so interesting because I think people do that more frequently for their mornings yeah. than they do for their evenings, right? Right. You just sort of run out of steam and go to bed, right? When the show is <laughs> Pretty over, much. Right? When you pass out like, cold. Yeah, I fell asleep on the couch. Somebody elbowed me. Right. And, and now we're talking bed, about right? that being around, you know, Hanukkah, Christmas, Christmas Eve. Right. People stayed too late. Thanksgiving, like, New time, Year's. But yeah. Like, yeah, New Year's is a great one because you're, you know, you're the whole entire celebration happens at midnight, right? So yeah. that's a late night already. So mm-hmm. what, what is, what does it look like when that's the sort of culmination of 30 days of Christmas parties and holidays and big meals and, you know, cause what we're, what we're eating, I'm, get, I'm starting to get this whole sleep hygiene thing. Like yeah. what we're eating during the day, how yes. does that impact us? Right? right. So then we're going to these, the same way we throw caution to the wind with finances. Sometimes we throw caution to the wind with diet. Yes. Because grandma brought cookies over. Cause listen, I have this pumpkin pie once a year. Yeah. Like I'm I got to go all in. I got to get enough breakfast. of it. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we, but we're not doing that. I think that's what makes this season different than like Easter, right? Because yeah. Easter's one one, day. one thing. There's not much around that, right? But November, December into the beginning part of January, there's multiple holidays, multiple celebrations. You know, it's an entire season of, you know, it's just like eating you, you and- go underwater and you don't come back up until like yeah. January 2nd. Yeah. And would be foolish to think that that's not going to have an impact on our physical and mental health yeah. if we don't practice some sort of intention. Because you're still trying to, you know, manage a job or if you're a mom or sure. a dad, do those things. It just it's it's an entire whole life put on top of your current life. Yeah, no, that's a great <laughs> way to put that. There's a lot of life in that life. <laughs> yeah, in those exactly. months. Yeah. And I think another thing, too, that when we know we're going through periods of time and um, I, I think, number one, recognizing that like the holidays, even yeah. good, fun, happy, fulfilling times it's a whole other life put on top of your life. I love that. Right. So like, you know, it's still going to be a stressor and, you know, we talked about sleep and the importance of sleep and sleep hygiene being a a concept to pay attention to versus just getting enough hours. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, I think water too, literally 
drinking water. We're going to be eating salty foods, sugary foods, foods we don't normally eat oh, all absolutely. year, right? Um, some people may be drinking responsibly, right? So where they where they don't usually, and and so there's a lot of layers there mm -hmm. um, where I think you know drinking enough water becomes even more important. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a, a that's a great point because hydrate, it is hydrate, 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 hydrate. hydrate. Flush everything out of your system because it's not yeah. only going to happen at home. Then you're going to go to work and some client sent a basket of muffins or right, all. Right. Yeah. Your vendors are like sending things because that, like, they want blue, your business. The blue or, tin of holiday cookies. Yes. That everybody <laughs> gets. That, <laughs> that we I like the little fake. They're in the shape of a pretzel. What, who, yes, I don't know who came yes. up with that, but it's become the iconic Christmas cookie. Yeah. yeah uh, and yeah, they're yeah, delicious. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So you're never going to eat just one. Right. So you need the water. Right. You need the water all the time. But it, I think it becomes even more important. And I've always always said, you know, from an emotional and mental health standpoint, like get a good night's sleep, drink enough water and then come back and talk to me. Right. I yes, absolutely. We would feel 90% better. Yeah. In, don't take two aspirin and call me in the morning. Right. Water and sleep. That's yep. what I want you to do. Right. Because yeah. now, of course, actual mental health disorders and challenges, that's different. It's not going to be yeah. cured with sleep and water, no. but um, some helps. of our more like within the range of normal human experience of the way that our emotions fluctuate and the mm -hmm. way we take on the world. If we could just get enough sleep and enough water, those things become easier yeah. and, and we feel better. Um, and I think it's, it, we can get away with skipping that less during times like the holidays. Yeah, definitely. I know um, drinking water, you know, bringing that up is great. One of the things drinking water is for me is it's a good measure of the level of my stress. Because I yeah. typically drink half gallon to a gallon a day. And when I feel like I'm dehydrated or I realized, oh, my goodness, I haven't filled my water bottle or my water cup. I'm like, I need to step back and take a look at what's going on because mm -hmm. it's an indicator that I am drowning. Yeah. <laughs> Funny enough, since I don't have <laughs> enough water, you know, but <laughs> I'm slipping under. I'm kind of yeah, yeah. losing it. Yeah. And I know like I, you know, it's almost embarrassing to say, but I have such an awareness of like how I feel, but not an awareness of what I've put into my body or mm -hmm. haven't put into my body. It's not, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's not a completely isolated incident for me to be complaining about like, gosh, I just don't, I don't feel good. I'm very anxious. I'm jittery. I'm just, you know, like my stomach kind of hurts. And my husband would be like, well, what did you eat? You know, what did you, what did you, well, I mean, I had a, I had a cup of coffee and a cheese Danish for breakfast. And he's like, well, it's four o'clock. Like, what, did you, <laughs> like what, else? what else, you know? And I'm like, oh, yeah, I guess yeah. so. I just got rolling and, and you got, you're just so busy no and you're moving along. Jittery, along you know? Right. So, um, so one of the things I I've done is, um, it's harder, you know, for me and I, and I, I don't, I hope I'm not alone in this out there in the world. Um, but it's harder for me to change a habit, um, proactively versus putting some protections in reactively as a starting point. Of course, mm -hmm. the goal is to change the habit and be proactive. So like when I get to that point and I'm feeling like, Oh, gosh, it's four o'clock or it's two o'clock. I haven't really taken care of my body today and I haven't had enough water. What I'll do is, um, get like a, like a sugar-free vitamin water or like a, like a, a smoothie that has like B12 in it and has good things for me. Right. Mm -hmm. Versus just at that point, one glass of water after gone, gone all day is not dehydration. Gonna, it's yeah, not going to fix the dehydration. It's fix the dehydration. It's like, but <laughs> so I, so I'll go for something like that instead of like the empty calories, or the empty carbs or the, you know, and so, um, so that's been very helpful to me and it's a, it, it kind of gets me back on track better mm -hmm. uh, when I've messed up like that. So, yeah. you know, even just knowing sort of what works for us when we get so, so far off track, you know, and I think that's part of the greater self-care conversation too. Yeah. And you know, I'm a huge proponent of self-care. Very, very much but so. But <laughs> even during the holidays, I feel like it's not negotiable. Mm -hmm. Like, and, and it shouldn't be a chore. Like it's your holidays too. Yeah, how do I too. fit it in though? Yeah. How I, do I create some calm in that chaos? You know what though? I think, and that's a valid question, but it's also a little bit of a cop out, right? Because <laughs> if someone else was like, like if you're, you know, like if my kid came to me and was like, I, you know, want to go Christmas caroling, but it's so busy and I don't know how to fit it in. I'm going to fit that in for her. I'm going to suddenly find the time that mm -hmm. I couldn't find for myself. Right. So we have to be, um, as intentional and as kind and giving to ourselves as we are to other people. And we just have to carve out the time as cliche as it says, find that as cliche as it sounds, find the time, right? Yeah. Um, it, it has to mentally be a not negotiable for you. Yeah. And, uh, and then we can do it. So, uh, but it is chaos and it's hard uh, and it'll be harder during this season to do that. But it's, um, 
it's necessary. Mm-hmm. It's absolutely necessary. You know, we talked like just last month, I, I think it was, we were talking about the importance of screening and paying attention and knowing, yeah. you know, what's going on with us and stuff. And what, like 30 days later, we're just going to be doesn't like, matter doesn't matter. Right? <laughs> <laughs> like, that was so October. Like, yeah. no, like that's, that's <laughs> supposed to be permanent, right? We're supposed to care about ourselves and, and the state of our health and, and well-being. Mm-hmm. So I think that that's, you know, making that a priority is just going to be better for you and everybody else around you. Yeah. One of the things that I think is important too is that, again, speaking to the awareness level mm-hmm. of the stress and the chaos and the this and that being run down, da, da, da. like don't make emotional decisions in the holidays. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> like we like understand that stress impacts our emotions and give yourself some grace and mercy and a break. Yeah. Right. So if you're feeling if, you know, a family member is um, getting under your skin, right? Like, I'm not saying you have to deal with toxic behavior, but, you know, try to have the perspective to sort of say, okay, like we're on top of each other in the holidays and I'm already stressed out and I already haven't had enough water and I don't have good sleep hygiene right now. And I'm going to just sit on this. In in one of our past episodes, you could look it up. We did uh, eight emotional hacks and that that could be a good refresher for some in the moment types of things that you can do to help yourself when, you know, your mother-in-law or your father-in-law or your, you know, your great, great aunt Beth is um, about to, you know, drive you wacky. We see a lot of people during the holidays that are not in our everyday, right? Yeah. And that we we may not have the same accommodations for them, right? Mm-hmm. But we care about them and we love them and we're happy to see them. And they're the in our house now. But now they're in our, our house. house. <laughs> and now <laughs> great aunt Beth is trying to exercise her expectations about what your Christmas looks like, right? right? Because and she wants hard. it to look a certain way. Sure, yeah. sure. And mm-hmm. that's hard. You know, yeah. we thought it was hard with our spouse. It's you know, really like, who does great aunt Beth think she is, right? So that's, right. I, this is <laughs> my house, but you're just like this in her mind, this little kid still, right. even though you're, right. you know, you know right. 30 or 40 or 50 or whatever you are, she right. still, you know, sees a little snot nosed kid running around messing up her house. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> so, so just having, you know, that pers- the perspective to mm-hmm. understand, you're just looking at different expectations mm-hmm. and managing those, yeah. you know, so a lot of managing expectations. And a lot of taking care of yourself. Yeah, and definitely. And I, I I, would argue all day long that getting enough sleep, very different than hygiene, um, and drinking water is going to be a really great place to start. Go into your bedroom and say, okay, you know, I'm notorious for having little washcloths over everything in my bedroom that has a little light emitted (laughs) from it. So, you know, just sit in that room and think about it. What, you know what? I hate this blanket. It's uncomfortable. Get rid of it. Why are you using it? Yeah. If there's too much light coming in through your windows because there's some street light or something, look at that and get some blackout curtains. It's just sitting in your room and looking around and saying, what bothers me? You know, I I recently moved. You know that, right? Oh, so like yes. our house is our room is the last the thing last we're doing place because no one sees it. The last to get touched, the last to get decorated, the last to be pretty, yeah. the last to be functional, and um and maybe that's not serving us very well. Yeah, don't stress out about putting a plan together because that wasn't the point. It was sure. just thinking of it a little bit more holistically. So start there, evaluate what's going on. And when then that's working for you, add something else in. Start to Mm -hmm. think a little bit further out, like what's happening in the last hour or the last 30 minutes before I go to bed. Yeah, I think the screens are a big thing. I mean, Mm -hmm. we we already know that, but just like educating ourselves and really paying attention to that because sometimes so much of what we think winds us down involves scrolling on our phones or watching a show and that putting that intentional buffer between a screen and sleep yeah. time, I think could go a long way. Yeah. And again, looking the importance of looking up reliable resources that give us that information about what we, what is the healthiest options mm-hmm. uh, and how, how we can incorporate that into our lives. Yeah. And mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's going to be different for everybody. You know, yes. we've talked about the, yeah. the power of intentional choices before. Mm-hmm. Right. And so I just think like wrapping our minds around all that you've heard us say a couple of times Uh, during this episode to revisit other things, right? Emotional hacks, revisit the financial health. This is the time. This is the time 
of the year in our lives that it's going to benefit us the most. Because you are going to need every to put single all that. tool at your yes. disposal. Put it all in. Put it all in on purpose, mm-hmm. right? The new one being sleep hygiene. Incorporate that in there. Yeah. Pay attention to it, right? And give Aunt Beth a break. Yeah. Thanks for listening to The Brain Factor. Joy and I are so thrilled to be having these needed conversations. We'd love to hear your feedback on this episode, so if you could drop a comment or leave a review with your thoughts or any requests that you may have, it would be appreciated. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. Living a healthier and happier life starts with one step, and we're excited to be on this journey with you. Until next time. Thank you for joining us on this episode of The Brain Factor. For helpful information on dealing with the hustle and bustle of holidays, see previous podcasts, Eight Emotional Hacks, the one about the money, the one about self-care, and the one about budgeting and holiday budgeting. We look forward to speaking with you on the next episode. New year, new you.